thought I'd give you guys a general uh, load path uh, conversation to help you understand load paths. This is a column. This would be a pure cap. There's a, a pile cap, piers, piles, piers are, can be below, above. In this case, erosion would expose it. But where we've got entrapment, if you will, or confinement with the soils around this, uh, we would, a concern would be deterioration, right? Water, things like that. But it appears it's uh, it's capped with concrete, so that's not an issue. This is not the load-bearing part, but this could act as a brace between the two columns and locking it in. Not really a concern unless you're in her um, the uh, the anchorage, unless it's part of the system, and also uh, um, earthquake type situations. All right, and if they're going to use it for traffic underneath these two underneath of this structure here, traffic going through and across. Column through slab, it says. Column on slab. See the difference here? It's going through, transferring load. This is column on the slab. So they pour the slab on in this diagram and this uh, setup. Then a column went through it. The difference now is that this concrete here is two different pours. So this concrete here would have to be greater than or equal to the PSI here, which is also an issue. Uh, but you'd like to have it so it's continuous. Moving on from there, so you created one, two seams. This only has the one that's below grade. If this is the grade up here, this is below grade. This is the new grade. That's the soil grade, but it's the surface grade. Okay. So now the load comes down. These are just securing um, reinforcement to this. It, it's, it's not needed in compression. It's more so for lateral movement. For probably tying the concrete in, etc. It's not adding um, strength to this this part in particular, the compression strength, compressive strength. And and it is also, and it also is taking away. Imagine if I could put a load on top of one of these reinforcements, a uh, concentrated load, this would now just be that under compression, this 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 rebar, if you will, under compression only, which can cause it to buckle and create an internal force in my concrete which I speak about with post-tensioning, the conflicts of rebar with post-tensioning. Um, there'll be no post-tensioning in this column, and diagonally, uh, yeah, diagonally, <laughs> vertically here. Coming down here, you have a pile cap. This would be a concrete, reinforced concrete. Now these piles, why are they there? Well, the soil up here can't take the load. If you were to remove these and just put this down onto this base here, the soils have been determined not to be able to take the load of the uh, of the forces applied. This would be like a bridge deck above or something like that. And the vibration and the frequency, if you will, would make this settle down. So to stop it from settling downwards, you know, down into the ground and causing all types of failures, they run piles, typically steel-lined piles or steel in general or different formats to get to the to get to the end of this to be able to transfer the loads from here down the piles to a base that will not move under these loads. So you're going to make it down to where, wherever, whatever the, the engineer decided, the, uh, the uh, geo engineer. Okay, and they, and they will sometimes, these things are so huge you can climb down them. Um, they'll test the bottom of them even at, when they're at the bottom or some of the bigger, bigger diameter um, piles. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about you know compression sickness too so you know they'll be wary of that if it's down too deep. So now they uh, so you drive this down, let's call it steel, you can call it reinforced concrete inside there also if you want. Um, that comes up to here. Now any load applied to here individually this one would be able to take so much before it would drive down further. But they won't act individually, they'll act as one because they put this reinforced concrete cap on top, pile cap. Um, this could be steel also. You can run steel across this and then uh, put a concrete cap on top of it. Of course, you have to worry about erosion and things like that. Any, any force on one, since they're tied in, would, would apply equally to them all. But there will be no individual force out here. So you can see the column comes down. The forces of, the, say, a bridge deck above will come down, transferring the load equally across all these members. As you can see the 
the center line of this is equal on each side. So it won't be an imbalance. It's going to drive it down equally. Any, any forces on here will be applied equally across all of these pile caps, which in turn are pushing back with, a, with an equal amount of force being applied to it. How's that? Not a spring. It's more, it won't add more force against it. All right. Because they've already equalized. Once they put it in there and left it alone, that's it. It's done. It's not pushing back anymore. Now, um, that was at the base when they were doing it. That's the general fast take of it to help you understand load paths. Again, the forces come down. This is all reinforcement. Now, idea, you would say that most of this force is coming straight down onto this one in the center. And that's why they reinforce it so much to make it so it acts as one, like a plate of steel, if you would. So any force here, but it still will have some some uh, concentrated forces down, down the middle, but they're trying to get those forces to share amongst this whole pile cap. This will come into play when they work with the Genoa, the new Genoa bridge. They're going to use um, pier. So as you look at this pile cap, it would basically be designed to not have deflection in it. That way all the load is transferred equally along each member. Now you see what, the, what it looks like above ground, if you will, above grade. You can have concrete, soil around it. Typically it's concrete around there. Um, and now this is what it looks like. This is a clipped pier. It has two overhangs. The center loads here are clearly have a low path straight down and compression here. This is now in overhang mode from here to here. The outer, the outer edges of this, and the outer edges, oh, I'm sorry, the outer surfaces, let's call it basically from here, that's pretty much going to transfer over and directly down, it's within that little overhang area. Um, the, the, ideally, it balances itself, the dead load. Of course, uh, the uh, live load, track the trailers, etc., would, would throw this into an imbalance, but it's engineered to be such that uh, you would hope that two and a half track the trailers could be sitting right here at this point. And it would show no deflection. Hmm. It would no, show, show no discernible, def, no, no deflection that would cause an issue within this uh, overhang. Let's just call this an overhang, your cantilever, and that would be your center support there supporting it. So a track the trailers, or 2.5 track the trailers up here, standing on top. Two and a quarter track the trailers, however you like to think about it. Standing right here on the edge where it would make this the most weakest, um, would be able to not cause a deflection. But did they count a shoulder over here? Which means that typically no track the trailer should be there, but let maybe, maybe they will. It won't be continuous usage. How about that? So now your overhang here creates a negative load over here, here, and here depending on how this is anchored in, right? If this was not anchored in at all, you can imagine it creates an overhang, a little seesaw effect. So the anchoring then puts this under tension at this point to hold it from the, from the seesaw effect, if you will. Counterweight is over there also, but the counterweight is equal to the side, so the counterweights are negated unless they attract a the trailer on the other side. So you can imagine that the seesaw effect would be right there. That's where your greatest effect um, and compression and this part would be tension up top at that point. Hopefully I didn't confuse you with that um, with what you're looking at but I wanted to just give you a little give you a little fun. This is what the Genoa, Genoa bridge is going to look like the new the new Genoa bridge. It's going to have ecliptic piers similar to this I would I would think um, they're 50 meters apart. Um, I think they meant it this way 50 meters apart one or more or two spans, I think, are going to report it right now, like 100 meters apart, and the uh, 50 meters on the others. It's going to be reinforced concrete. So uh, there we go. We're back to concrete, and such a high span is just asking for drama, right? It's just asking for drama. These low spans, I like the low spans in concrete. It's easy to maintain, service, etc. The high spans, they're, they're, they just love their concrete sometimes. Uh, it's cost-effective. And there we are with the uh, maintenance is just going to be crazy again.